Erdizzle back with the walkthrough of the daily tournament ending on June 20th. And my bag for this round, my accurate windbreak fuse as usual, my accurate windbreak river. I did swap in the accurate windbreak explorer for a couple holes. I also threw in the accurate glide musket for a little more distance. And then my light glide ballista as usual. And then a disc I don't use very often, a wind skip ballista, which I'm going to use only on one hole, but it's kind of an important hole. Speaking of that hole, this is the disc I'm going to use on hole one. And so this one with a wind of three is just not an easy hole. And this particular hole was actually the reason I almost didn't try to do anything with this round because nice skip ace there. Getting an ace on hole one, it's just the grind is so annoying. Um, if you've tried that one so far, this tournament is just not very much fun. And hole two, I just aim out to the left. Again, the only real mistake you can make here is hitting that tree. So I just let it fade out to the left. There's no point in going right at the pin. Um, but going back to hole one, that is probably one of the more annoying ace grinds. And that's actually the reason why you'll see what I'm going to do at the end of this video. So hole three is, again, the reason I have the river in the bag. I almost didn't keep it, but the river is just such a straight disc. And I almost messed it up. I hit the wall there and skipped down. But that's the beauty of the river is it's not going to do anything crazy. It'll just kind of settle down there. And so pretty... I shouldn't say pretty easy birdie with a wind of three, but with the river it is. Then hole four, so this is one you absolutely must ace, and this is the reason the Explorer is in the bag. Especially with the left to right wind, the river just flips too much. And so the Explorer is most definitely my ace disc for this one. Um, I don't normally keep it in the bag, but I've used it quite a bit, so I'm used to it. And I hit that, and that one took a little bit. I definitely did not hit that first time. That took me a few shots to do that. Hole five, this is one where if you really want to do well, you want to try to eagle it. Um, you can try to go up over the top, but in the new update, I have not found a good line for this hole. I might mess around with it a little later, but I just try to play it out here. And I'd like to be inside 200, and this was just, I mean, I could run this, but at the time, I didn't have a really good round, so I just, I kind of laid that one up. If you're really, really going for the record on this one, or the high score, you kind of have to run that one, or at least try for the eagle. You don't necessarily have to get it, but one you do have to get is hole six. You absolutely must eagle this one. There's just no other way to put it. And I've been experimenting with a sidearm here, and this just was absolutely perfect. I mean, you can't put that in a better spot. But I mean, the backhand works well, forehand. You can aim for the far path. It's just, there's a lot of options for this. You just want to stay out of the middle. And so from 300 feet, I'm just going to throw the river. And the river will turn a little bit, so I'm just going to throw it right up through that gap right there. And usually it'll just drop down, and I almost messed up and hit the tree right there. But even if I did hit that tree, most of those trees that are around the green here do not have collision on the branches. So I felt pretty confident I could actually make the shot no matter where it dropped. So hole seven, once I see blueberry, I know you're going to have to get an A somewhere in here. So this hole is actually the reason I have the accurate glide musket. My normal accurate windbreak just doesn't quite get there. And even the accurate glide is just, with that wind, is just a little too short. That was not really a good effort. Um, I've hit the basket a couple times, but you really need to get it up in the air. And it's just, that's a very tough hole with that wind to ace. Unless you want to bump up to a recoil, which I did not want to do. And then hole eight, same thing, the accurate windbreak musket is just a little too short and so I went with the accurate glide and this one I've also hit the basket on and that one was little left again both seven and eight were not very good shots and so right now if I birdie this there we go and then I birdie the last one I'll have an 18 um, I really like a 17 here which means I have to ace this one so a window one very aceable get a spot and so if I hit this, I will have first place. And I missed it left. Right height, just a little left. So I'll have to settle for the uh, 18, which I believe, I forget what it is under par. Let's wait just a second here. Is it a four, 13 under, 14 under? It's a 12 under. Okay, a lot of par threes. And so that puts me in second place. And I'm actually not going to try for first. Um, if you would have caught me months six months ago i would have definitely grinded that one out because i mean it's there there's really not that many tricky holes you have to ace hole one 
ace, I believe, hole five, make sure you eagle the par five, and then ace that last hole. I mean, it's there. I just, I don't have the the desire or the drive to really push and, and get that one. So I can see somebody else looks like Denny. That's a pretty good round. Congrats to him. That's a pretty good round of 13 under 17. I can see a couple other people jumping in there before the tournament's over, but I just, I don't have the grind in me anymore. So not all my videos will be first place videos, but you at least get to check out the layout and some of the choices I made. And again, I can't remember the last time I used that wind skip ballista. That's just not a common disc to use. So again, hopefully you enjoyed and learned something and I'll be back later.